Yo, yo, we're back with another one, and another one, and another one, man. This is what we all think of podcast stories behind the craft. We got a special one for y'all today. Don't mind my voice a little bit. You know, I'm going to give y'all a little story time. I went to a mellow event last night. I'm not a smoker, so the <laughs> smoke in the air was messing with my throat. So just be patient with me, guys, today. So this guy right here is one of our patrons in the industry right now. He's doing his thing. Um. I first seen him in NWA. He did. Doing his thing. And it's good to see him have him sitting in his chair. So without further ado, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi. What's popping, everybody? You know what it is, what it was, and what it will be. It's the kid Jason Mitchell signing on, man. How the girls stand up. You know what it is. All right, all right. <laughs> so word of the day. Word of the day. Mm. Um, resilience. Why? Because um, you know, like I'm here in Florida for the Orlando Urban Film Festival, right? But we done been through some ups and downs, like in in the industry and with these films lately. Like we went from COVID, which was basically a fucking zombie movie that we was living in, right? (laughs) And then we went to strike, you know, after strike, after strike. So it's like, you know, making these films... Is, is already a hard task to do. But with all of that, it's like, it just says something about what we got going on right now. You know what I mean? And with everything I've been through in my own life, in my career and all of that shit, like, yeah, that's the word of the day, resilience. Definitely. I think you embody that a lot, especially like what you were saying about you going through so much in your career, what you right. had going on. So yeah. that's good to see you here in Florida. Thank so you. I asked you off camera, but the people want to know, how do you like Florida? I love Florida. I love Florida. They got, I mean, beautiful weather. Well, sometimes. <laughs> um, beautiful women, amazing food, amazing people. You know, it's easy to travel to. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's it's a whole ass vibe here. So what you like to eat when you come here? Most of the time, the Caribbean food, because it'd be real Caribbean people making that shit. You know what I mean? I feel that. It'd be that real grassroots yard man thing. (laughs) I'm feeling it. So, yeah. So, how did you get into acting? To be honest, man, I was just trying to make new friends. You Mm -hmm. feel me? Yeah, because I was like, you know, like growing up in New Orleans, dog, you always be one foot in and one foot out the streets. Like, it, it really is like that for most men i say you know like women is it's kind of easy for them to get a job that's like sustainable you know but like for men you got a whole nother level of responsibility so it's like you might have a job but you hustle on the side you know so um my best friend ended up getting killed when i was like 23 and i was like damn like i just felt like my world was closing in on me you know what i mean and although like we've kind of desensitized the shit you know we got a lot of people, like a lot of, um, how can I say it? A lot of hoods everywhere, you know, is going through the same exact thing. So I don't feel like my story is super crazy or super special, but it's different when it's happening to you. You know what I mean? When the police showing up at your house and they questioning you about this and that, it's like, man, this just ain't what I want for myself. You feel me? So my sister always used to tell me like, yeah, it's the niggas you hang with. You need to find you some better friends. Da, 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 da. So I'm like, all right. So I heard this, uh, this ad on the radio about an acting class or whatever. So I went down there. Shout out to Jacqueline Fleming. I went to her acting class. Nigga, I went down there with a three-piece suit on and shit, trying to get, I was just like, I just want to be a part of the class. You know what I mean? But it turned into something that I really just fell in love with. And like, it, it was supposed to be an eight-week class. And like five weeks into that, I ended up getting an agent and all that type of shit. Like, it took me a little while to book because, you know, there's, there's a lot of technical things you got to learn with acting. But once I got a hold of that, it was over with. So... What was that moment that was like, all right, I'm really in love with this. I really want to take this on as a job because acting could go different ways. Right. You could get a job today, you're going to have a job tomorrow. Right. I think um, I think I fell in love with it, like, as soon as I felt like it was something I could be great at, you know? Like, I don't, I never wanted to be good at some shit. Like, to be honest, you could, you know, put in a year or two or some time, 
and be good at something. Like you could teach a monkey how to do 500 things, you know? So I never wanted to be good. I wanted to be great at something. I just didn't know what it was. But like in them few weeks in that classroom, I felt like I could be great at this shit, like for real, you know? Like I think I knew it before the world, you know what I mean? So once I got my first check, I was like, oh, yeah, I need to, you know what I mean? I need to pursue this, like, for real, for real. Because it wasn't enough to, like, pay my bills. But I think for one day of work, I made, like, $101 an hour for eight hours. And then once I went into overtime, it was time and a half after that. And I worked, like, 15 I hours. I would get, like, more of a, like, salary-based check. Well, once you get there, once you get there, like now I got a quote and you know what I mean, type of deal. But like when you first start off, you get what they call SAG scale, you know what I mean? Which is like like eight hundred I think it's eight hundred and eight dollars for eight hours. You know what I'm saying? So That's like you go in the time and a half after that, which is yeah, it's a lick. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That's good that's some good money right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after that you started getting your free will. What was your first role that you got into? Oh, it was called Texas Killing Fields. I was a 7-Eleven clerk, right? And just to put it in perspective for you, like most people who act know they want to act at a young age. They go to like a theater school or some type of performing arts school. Then, you know, when it comes to film, they end up being like an extra or something like that to have, you know, their first experience on set. My first experience, I had three lines and like that was a big deal. But I didn't know because I didn't grow up around actors. You know what I mean? I didn't really know no other actors. Like, all I knew was, like, three lines ain't enough. Like, I need more. Straight up. And I went there and I killed it. I did a great job. Like, uh, Sam Worthington, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Jason Clark, Chloe Moretz, like, Stephen Graham. A bunch of great people was in this movie. But at the time, I'm like, these just all kind of, like, you know. You know, we don't really be knowing white people names like that. I'm just saying, you know, like no offense to the white community, but you know what I mean, though? Like, you know, all you know is like, OK, you know, you know, they face or whatever it may be. But to me, it wasn't nothing that I had touched the community yet with either. You know what I mean? So I was like, until I get there, I ain't made it yet. I ain't tapped in yet. So you getting, you being hungry, what was like some of like the toughest lessons you learned throughout this process of you being an actor and you being a black man, you're so strong and everything that you do. I think, you know, we hear cliche shit all the time, like you only get one shot, man. You know, as black man, you ain't got no room to fuck up and all of that. You be like, all right, like, you know what I mean? Like you be hearing that all the time, but it's really true. Like it's really true. The idea of you being replaced is so in your face. You know what I mean? Like they, Hollywood got a weird way of making you feel like they blessed you. Like, you ain't been going, like, hard for years and years and years, and you ain't dedicated your life to this shit. Like, you wasn't a fucking starving artist. You know what I'm saying? Like, they treat it like, like a privilege. And it's kind of crazy when you thinking, like, this my craft. You feel what I'm saying? Like, think about it like this. Like, if you was a plumber or an electrician, right, and after years of beating up your body and, and beating up, you know, your your hands and your back and all of that shit, you go home hurting every day. You know what I mean? And after 10 years, somebody, like, treats you like it's a privilege. Like, hell, no, nah, I worked hard as fuck to get here, actually. You know what I mean? I got all type of certifications and licenses and I got a team and all kind of shit. So when people tell you, like, it's a privilege, it's kind of like, what? Like, no. Hell no. You know, the idea of that is crazy. So my question is, because I'm an emotional person. Yeah. So I play football. Like you were saying, being replaced so in your face. So how do you, like, keep your composure or stay steadfast and knowing that you're great at this art that you call acting? I think, you know, it's it's putting all the rest of the shit aside. You know, I think it was Muhammad Ali who said it. He was like, you know, the hardest part about it is being in bed at the right time, making sure you ain't got no girls in the bed, like staying focused, you know what I mean? But like, if you make it about the craft, it stays fun. Like I did this shit for free at one point in time, you know? So to get paid for it, 
is it's an amazing thing. But I think a lot of times people get blinded by the fame, you get blinded by money, and you got these women approaching you, and you feel like, oh, I got all I ever wanted. You know what I'm saying? But like, if you x all of that out and just worry about the craft and continue to challenge yourself, like. Yeah, that's how that's how you stay in it, dog. You make it fun. You know what I mean? Like you know, cause you play sports. Like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like you get this this fucking this talk at the championship game. You know what I mean? And then before all that, like before you go on the field, coach says, just remember to go out there and have fun. You got you guys go out there and have fun. You know what I mean? And that's really the truth, dog. Like you know, you play your best when you out there smiling. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. just a different game, and it's simpler too. Yeah, it's absolutely. Absolutely. So, just like I was saying in the intro, mm -hmm. I first saw you as Easy. -E, yeah. And even though it might sound cliche, my favorite scene was the beginning of the movie when you was in the house and then you was trying to run away from the people. Yeah. It was just great to see like it start off with action because yeah. you know I'm I'm in love with biographies. That's like my favorite thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love like all the biographies. People think those are boring or they're drawn out right but just to see y'all bring that to life because i wasn't even thought of around that time right right but just to see y'all replay that and go through that and get to see what actually was going on yeah how did that make you feel being such an iconic character well first of all <laughs> that was kind of the, one of the most technical things i had done at the time mm -hmm. right so just to give you an idea um that scene when i pull up to the house just me getting out of the car and walking up to the door took me 33 takes because I had to like pull up, hit a sandbag, get out, make sure the screwdriver that I had was hitting the light, go behind the trunk, pop the trunk, give the, you know, give the, the camera enough room to get over there. So I had to like put my foot on the curb so I didn't cast a shadow into that bitch. Like it was so much shit. You know what I mean? And that shit took 33 takes, bro. Like, like it was so fucking crazy. And then at the end of it, like, like when I finally got it right, like everybody started clapping. They had people sleep all on their roofs and shit. People with sleeping bags and shit. And I didn't know all these people was watching. I was so focused. You know what I mean? But I was like, yeah, that's when, but that's when I knew we was doing something special though. You know what I'm saying? Like when you got people outside 3.30, 4.30 in the morning, like supporting us, like bringing us food and shit out their house. Like it was lit. You know what I mean? But like, I just, <sighs> I was so honored, man. Every time I think about it, I'd be like, damn, bro. Like, this shit crazy, you know? Because I remember the feeling that I got when it hit my email. Like, you know, you got this this audition or whatever for Easy e And I'm like, man, I don't know nothing like this, man. I don't know none of this shit. But then I was like, you know what? Maybe I could get this. Then when I started reading it, I'm like, hold up. Maybe I could kill this. You know what I mean? And I just, I threw on the log voice real quick, threw on the California swag on their ass and took off. You know what I mean? Like, that's, you know, so it, it for me, it's like, it's such a privilege, bro. It's such a privilege. Like, words can't really describe, like, what it means to me for real. But, yeah, it was definitely one of the best experiences of my life, for sure. So, when it comes to being another person, because... We always hear this from actors or actresses when they're embodying somebody else. Mm -hmm. They have to emerge in their whole lives or they have to go do their research on what that person was right. doing in those times. Right. So what was the process of you actually being in his life and actually seeing what he's going on? Because, of course, he's not here with us today for you right. to go sit down and have those conversations. Right. So what it was like actually having to do your research and stuff like that? Well, you know, as far as like the, I think I knew everything that most of the fans knew going into it, right? Mm -hmm. Because I, I was a big Bone Thugs fan, you know what I'm saying? So of course I knew Easy, of course I knew about these iconic beefs and all of that type of shit, but like, once I realized that, okay, I might have a really good shot at this, I started reaching out to family members. You know what I mean? Reaching out to everybody who I could find, like Lil Easy. You know he got like nine kids or some shit like that. So I'm reaching out to everybody, you know? So by the time I got to L.A., I was like, yeah, everybody should come link up. You know what I mean? And everybody was cool with it. Then they got there and was like, what the fuck you got going on? You know what I mean? Like, you trying to start some drama. I was like, no, nah, I'm really just trying to learn. They was like, well, you're going to have to learn a different kind of way. You know what I mean? Like, this shit is really, really, really real. Then that's when it started to hit me, like, damn, wait, seven seven baby mamas, nine kids, you got this going on, that going on. I'm like, okay, so I just kept digging, kept digging, kept digging. And, like, to be honest, Universal wasn't really about helping me with that shit, neither, dog. Like, going 
to like Kelly Park where he grew up and all of that shit. They ain't want had nothing to do with that. You know what I mean? So I had to have people like Lil Easy and you know people like that really go take me down there to the hood and show me what it was about. You know, but I had to study gang culture, all of that shit. Shout out to Nipsey Hussle. He he was a big part of that. You know what I mean? Like man, rest his soul. He was he was. Yeah, instrumental in helping me do that too. So you had a conversation with him? Yeah, absolutely. And how was that conversation? Um, it was really to understand what gang culture was really about. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times, like, people make it seem like it ain't no money involved. Like people just banging colors, and that's just what it is. You know, but it's so much deeper than that, and there's so much organization that goes into it, and so much like um respect you know what i'm saying it's like a chain of command all of these things that are happening and people just see the outer exterior and think that like this shit don't have no sort of organization to it you know so he um yeah he helped me like really understand what that culture was about so i got two important questions because i'll be asking bojack this all the time but mm-hmm. i really want to know for somebody who's in those standpoints right how is it having to get punched in your stomach right on camera like having to act like that and then like dying like those are like crazy like because it's just crazy <laughs> things to think about like i'll be thinking about people who get shot in movies right and just like how do y'all go in like i'm about to get punched or i'm about to die in this movie like how does that feel or what's that process like well i mean for me i've done it a couple of different ways right because the worst thing you could do is anticipate and active, period. You know, like, just like how you sitting here listening to what I'm saying and mm-hmm. processing what I'm saying and all of that shit is because you're not anticipating the words. You're just genuinely listening to what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. When you have a script, it's kind of hard to do that at times because you know what the person about to say. You know what you're going to say back, you know? So, like, a lot of times that shit could get a little complicated. So... For me, like on a physical level, it's been times where I just be like, fuck it. If you just gonna hit me, just go for it. Fuck it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, for real, for real. Sometimes, you know, like sometimes I just tell them, fuck it, throw a pad on me and just hit me. Like, cause I can't fake it. Like, I don't know how to do that part. You know what I mean? But it's sometimes where it's like, you know, where like if they put like a squib pack on you, which is the thing that like explodes, you know, when you get shot and all this fucking blood goes everywhere. You kind of like you know it's about to like hit you and it's going it's going you don't know how it's going to feel you know what I mean so it's like all this shit going through your mind so the best way you could do is just like try to act like that shit ain't gonna happen at all you know what I mean otherwise you're gonna be doing the the fucking the you know what I mean you know that dance the fucking what they call it the, the Harlem Shake joint oh. you know what I mean when people just be ah 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 you know and the shit just looks super stupid you know what I mean so. Yeah, bro, it's 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 crazy going down that that path, you know what I mean? Cause you know it's about to happen to you, but if you like try to wait on it or brace yourself for it or whatever, the shit just look fake. And then you gotta do it eighteen times. You know what I mean? Versus just being like, fuck it, nigga. Just like this last movie we did, Black Heat. Shout out to my dog Trick, you know, he he a, a wrestler or whatever. But um the thing about wrestlers is that they big as fuck. You know what I mean, dog? This dude stepped on my back, dog. My chin hit the ground so hard. I was like, Lord. And you could see them, everybody behind the camera like, and and I ain't say cut. I'm just like, fuck it. Because in my mind, I'm like, we're going to use this one. You know what I mean? He whooping my ass for real. Like, he was really beating the shit out of me, dog. Pads and all, none of that shit matter. You know what I mean? And a lot of times, like, mm. in this film especially, we ain't even had no pads. Me and NLE Chopper, we... We going back and forth fighting, dog, shirtless. You know what I mean? Niggas was scraped up, fucked up. I done got, I'm, I really got punched in the neck for real. Like, we done bust a couple of lips. Everybody punched each other a couple of times. Like, it was crazy, my nigga. Damn. Like, <laughs> you got to be real friends to be like, Psh. my bad. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? And then just keep it moving. That shit was, yeah, that's it was what, interesting. That's to be the confusing part of me. Like, damn, like. I got to hit my dog in his face real quick. Right. But we just, we just can, but right. I don't know. That's why I don't know if I could be an actor for real. Because it's like, how could I go to punch somebody? Or like me and him having like a tough scene. Right. Like I seen a clip you was talking about, the Tasha versus Ghost. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They was, they was going at it with each other. Right. So how could you like sit across from each other knowing this is just not reality. This is fake. But I got to really do my part in his role. Right, I think it turned into like a sparring match. You get what I'm saying? Because yeah. I learned when I worked with Paul Giamatti, 
that like if it's three or more people in the scene, they got what you call yes and, right, in the acting world. So it's like a, a improv rule. Like you agree with what the person has going on and then you amplify it. But when it's two people in the scene, it's all about who could slip the punch, who could slide in a body shot, you know what I mean, and do some shit the other person wasn't expecting them to do. You know what I mean? And then, like, see who could catch each other off guard. So that's kind of what it turns into. Like, when you know you working with a good-ass actor, you like, man, let me try to see if I can catch him slipping right quick. You know what I mean? To get the last word or whatever it may even, be. Even with the script, like, yeah. you still want to. So how you, like. How you remember your lines, especially like when it goes down to that, especially yeah. when you're doing tough scenes? I think for me it's believing myself. You know what I mean? Because uh, like people rarely say what they really want to say. You feel me? So knowing how you feel on the inside, like let's say for instance, like because they have what they call like the through line, mm -hmm. right? So we all know no means no, right? We know that. But like we know, no, that means touch my booty. You know what I'm saying? We know this. You get what I'm saying? So like, if you know how you feel on the inside about something, no matter what the words are that you're saying, your 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 body language and your demeanor and all of that gonna be in subtext. You get what I'm saying? So a lot of times the words don't matter as much as where they coming from. You feel me? Feel that? Yeah. So how you feel about? the new age, AI, all the stuff that's coming out. Yeah. How you feel about stuff like changing drastically in the world? You know, contrary to popular belief, I feel like it gives me the option to to be a high level filmmaker way fucking easy. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. now we could have a setup and go make Dune our fucking self. That's how I look at it. You know what I mean? Like my boy DOC, you mentioned straight out of Compton, DOC, he um he's actually working with an AI right now that basically brought his voice back. You know what I mean? Like they used his old voice with his new raps and merged them together with this AI shit. Like imagine how that man must feel after like fucking 30 something years of not being able to rap. You know, he crushed his voice box three days before he was about to go on his first tour, bro. Like, imagine what that man must have been going through. You know what I'm saying? So to see AI be able to fix that, it's like, yo, this shit crazy. Because, I mean, I get why, like, we got to fight for our rights, right? And make sure that they not just out here cloning a nigga. You know what I mean? And, what would you do and, if you and, see your own clone, though, for real? Yeah, that fuck me up. For real, that'll fuck me up. Because on a stack of Bibles and Korans, I feel like you can't go find another Jason Mitchell. But what if they did, bro? No, what if it was just that like shit exactly like crazy? Like right, that should be crazy. Because it's like the more you them. teach it, like, because I'm, I'm watching Doc put his cadence in certain shit and breaths and certain, you know, emphasis on certain words. Like, and he really teaching the AI how to rap. Like, imagine what that bitch gonna be doing in five years, bro. Like, that's crazy. Like, a motherfucking that's dangerous, bro. That's that shit's so crazy. Scary, too. Yeah, super scary. Super scary. So, I seen the article. Mm -hmm. They were saying that you're getting blackballed in a way. Do you feel like you're getting blackballed? Nah, nah, hell no. Nah. That's not how I feel. I do feel like, um, you know, in some ways I was dealt a shit hand. There was some ways that, uh, you know, some things I got to hold myself accountable for. Because the thing is, like, you know, it's like if you get pulled over in a stolen car, you can't get mad that all y'all go to jail, even if you didn't steal the fucking car. You know what I'm saying? It's like some situations you just can't put yourself in, you know? So, you know, I had to learn, but, like, I definitely feel like God, um, that was God's work. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes he got to sit you down and make you pay attention. Like, because I thought just getting out of the hood and 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 um making my mama proud was the goal. But it's like so much bigger than that. This shit is hardly about me at all. Like now that I look around and see, okay, I didn't I didn't influence the lives of how many people? That's that's really what matter. You know what I mean? When I'm dead and gone, my mama ain't gonna be able to tell them fucking stories to nobody. Oh, my son did this. And he flew me out to this and he bought me this. That shit don't fucking matter for real. 
You know, if you ain't creating a bridge, if you ain't trying to pass out the information, first of all, you probably got a fucking complex. You know what I mean? But like, it's it's important to to give people something that they can take home for themselves. You got to teach a man how to fish. Yeah, because you eat forever. Yeah. So what's next for you? What's some plans? We had the 10 under the year. Yeah. What's some things you got coming? Um, To be honest, I really just started getting my feet wet as a producer. You know, I, only, I, I just finished my, this what, the third one, Bojack? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yep, yep. So this is my third one I done produced, so now I'm like, that's the route that I want to go. You know, all the ideas that's in my head. I feel like I did enough of the... um In front of the camera. Not not even just that. Like, I did enough of other people's ideas and other people's passion mm-hmm. projects and all of that kind of shit. And now I want my stuff to start surfacing. You know what I mean? Like, don't get me wrong. Motherfucker called and they got that bag. I'm going to get that money. You know? Facts. But I, I, I got movies that I want to make and I got shit that I want to do. You know what I mean? So I need to start putting that out there in the world. I see a lot of people, a lot of actresses and actors are taking the producer route. Yeah. They're actually getting behind the camera and pointing, like you said, pointing out their ideas, what they want to see. Yeah. Hence, like, Michael B. Jordan with Creed. Yeah, so yeah. So what makes y'all want to go that route? What What did you see in that path of you, like, let me let me try to be behind the camera and see what I can point out or see what I can bring to life for myself? You know, I think it starts as, like, like for me, I just started as a movie lover before I knew I was going to act or have the opportunity to do any of that. Like, I was a movie lover and also, like, a little fake critic type shit. You know what I mean? And it's to the point where, like, you paying attention to, like, continuity. You know what that is? Uh, I could be ignorant to it, but I probably do know once you explain it. So let me hip you. You've been peeping this shit your whole life. Like, you ever watch a movie, motherfucker be smoking a cigarette, and in you know, one scene, it's, like, super long, and then you get to the next part, and it's super short, and then it get back long again, and you're like, what the fuck is up with the cigarette? You know what I mean? Why does motherfucker keep changing? Or like, when you watch, uh, what is that, Minister Society, he got one gun running up to the nigga, then he pulled a gun out. You know, he when he upped the gun, it's a whole different gun. You're like, what the fuck? You noticing these things, but it's called continuity. You know what I'm saying? And it's somebody's job on set to look at the script and make sure everything is the same, down to, like, how you move your hands. If you picked up a glass on these, you know, when you said these words, like, all of that kind of shit matters. You know what I mean? So now that the technical side of me understands what the the um, the natural artist was seeing and interpreting, now it's like, now I want to take my ad back. You know what I mean? It's like when you first learn how to drive. Like, you've been watching your parents drive for years. Like, you went from the back seat, you know, well, from the car seat to just in the back seat. Now you in the front seat. Now you like, I think I could do this. Like, let me whip this bitch. You know what I mean? I got it, you know? So, now you driving the yeah, that's kind of what it is. You know, it's just, I'm just growing up. And, and I want people to see what's in, in the mind of Jason Mitchell. Definitely. So, you named a couple movies. What's your top five favorite movies? Ooh. Slumdog Million now. Um, fuck, man. It's so hard to do this shit, bro. Damn. Because, see, F. Gary Gray is my favorite director, right? But it's like, because his first movie was Friday. He obviously did Straight Outta Compton, but um, he ain't never miss. You know what I mean? So I feel like I need to pick one from him. So fuck it. We'll just say Friday. Um... It's crazy. I don't know why this movie makes me feel good when I watch it, but um, the other guys <laughs> with Mark Wahlberg uh, and Will Ferrell. Will that Ferrell movies are always good. Yeah, that shit's super funny to me. Oh, damn. Probably Scarface. Scarface, for sure. And... Damn. Friday's... Other guy, Scarface, you got two more. Mm. Oh, I said Slumdog Millionaire, too. Oh, Slumdog Millionaire, okay, one more. Yeah, so um, maybe Fury, you seen that movie? I probably did. I watch a lot of movies. Yeah, it's a war movie, but it's like about this tank battalion, and that was called. You got to check that out. I think I did watch it. Yeah. I think we got it at the house, if I'm not mistaken, do yeah. I think we do. Yeah. Fury, so Fury go crazy. I always ask my my artists, a lot of guests, mm. if you could be in any TV show or movie, what would it be and why? 
So you already been in a lot of movies, a lot of TV shows. Who? So if it was a TV show out there that you have been eyeing, where to call you, what TV show would that be? I mean, it's fucked up because it's like starting to like wrap up and come to an end now, but I definitely would have loved to be a part of the Power Universe for sure. 50, listen, nigga, whatever is next, hit me. You got my number. You know what I mean? Like, definitely, definitely that. But um, shit, man, what else was really good? I feel like Black Mirror was really fucking dope, too. I've seen it, but I never tapped in. Yeah, Black Mirror, hard. I like, because I like shit that's abstract and, like, make you think. You know what I mean? Like, I never forget the first time I seen The Matrix. You know, it's like the first time you seen, what's that movie? Final Destination. You walk out the movies like, <laughs> hey, what the fuck? You know what I mean? <laughs> Nigga ain't driving behind no more trucks. You know what I mean? Like, like that type of shit. I like, I like to make stuff that, like, stick to people. You know what I mean? That stuff be playing on my head, though. I be Bro. overthinking it sometimes. Oh, God. I be like, oh. that's all I'm like, well, I don't know. I be overthinking it. That's why sometimes I be watching these thrillers. Yeah. And then, like, I was watching On the Line. I be telling everybody about this movie. Right. And it's like, the way it played out, it was so, like, you had to really watch it to understand because everything was just backwards in a way. Right. So I just like, why he's getting... Cussed out and why people hanging from a tree and what's going on? Right, right. Why he telling him jump off a building? And right. the whole time it was a practical joke. Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, that's crazy. That's like that Nicole Kidman movie, The Others. You know what I mean? The whole time they was the ghosts haunting the house and they think they got ghosts and shit. The whole time they dead like a motherfucker. That shit was crazy. <laughs> Damn, yeah, that was one of the mind benders for sure. So. That's a question that trumps a lot of people when I ask them this. It's okay. a crazy question. Okay. If the doctor said, Jason, we got to cut off your arms or your legs, what would they be? What would you choose? Mm. Damn, they going to cut off my dick with my legs too? How far on the legs? I don't know. That's something in the doctor got to talk about. I feel like I might go legs. Depending. Like, if it's, like, right above my knees or down, I think I could do legs because technology is, is good enough now. And I could still kind of be myself. You know what I mean? Or at least I could catfish a couple of bitches. You know what I'm saying? I could I could just be sitting there. They wouldn't know. You know? I could I could be Zooming the fuck out of everybody and going on mad Zoom dates. You know what I mean? They'll, they'll never fucking know. You know? But no arms? Hell no, brother. Hell no. I seen on TikTok this guy just had no arms. Like, he ain't have no body part, period. Like, he just had a frame. Oh, like, I seen dude before. Yeah. And he be on that bitch dancing and standing yeah, and shit and flipping right. around on his head. Yeah, yeah that'd be crazy. You, that nigga face probably tough as hell, like pig skin. You hear me? Like leather face. Yeah, that boy just, shit probably I tough. I don't know how he eats or I don't, I don't, I don't know. That's why I was just like, I want to ask people, like, how would they feel in those moments? I ain't gonna lie, I just jump. I just say, fuck it. I wouldn't even, because it's not to say that they stressing everybody out. You know what I mean? But I think that I, well, if I was born like that and I didn't know no different, that might be one thing. But like, if I, if fucking, I was a part of an, an explosion or some shit and I just, my shit is all <laughs> fucked up, man, I'm out of here. I'll pull the plug. Fuck this shit. It's over. So, I heard a little, a little hidden talent you got. Yeah. You could cry on the man. <laughs> How does that work? Um, <laughs> you want to see? Yeah, go ahead. All right, hold on. Let me see. Bruh. <laughs> Hold on. I got <laughs> you making me laugh. But yeah, you see what I'm saying though. It's like to me it's just sort of it's it's a it's breath work now. You know what I mean? Cause it, it done got to the point where like it's um it's uh muscle memory a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because like I got a bunch of shit I could tap into, like, thoughts and be like, fuck, I never cried about that, man. You know what I mean? Or they got songs I could listen to that'll put my mind in that state. But, like, if I start breathing a certain way, like, it, it starts to let me access that. And then pff, that shit will just come out. I just got to embrace it. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of times it's reeling it in. That's crazy because 
most of the time, like, people who cry and don't want to cry, like, especially men, you don't want to cry in them situations. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So, like, to me, that real shit is, like, when you trying to hold it back, when them tears trying to sneak out and you like, hell no. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's that's really the shit. But turning on the faucet, that ain't, ain't really that hard. I can't just cry like that, though, like, out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, you, um... You gotta let a nigga do the major pain. You hear him break one of your fingers. <sighs> Twist your shit. Cause it be like, see, so you gotta <laughs> cut like an onion or something. To make people cry. No, nah, a lot of people like, cause I ain't gonna lie, I've been on set with several motherfuckers who couldn't cry on command, right? And they got like this little, it looked like chapstick. Yeah, and they could, it's, it's like a, what it is? Yeah, it's like, but what's menthol? That's what it is. And they just blow it in your eyes, and that shit will have you. Or they could put it under your eyes, and that shit will have you. But they have so much tricks. In that shit will have you like, uh-huh, uh-huh. you know what I mean? Like, I don't see how people rocking with that shit under their eyes, bro. I be like, this shit might not be for you, son. If you can't cry, like, they need to get a roll to somebody else. <laughs> for real. Because I understand people had their days, you know. And, like, you remember when you used to get your ass whipped as a child mm-hmm. and, like, you cry yourself to sleep and wake up feeling, like, refreshed, yeah. you know? That's kind of how it is, you know what I mean? So, like, a lot of times when I do, like, heavy crying scenes, I got to go to the trailer and go to sleep after that, get a whole nap, because that shit is exhausting. I'm feeling it. Mm-hmm. Bruh, I'm telling you. <laughs> we did this this movie just now, the last one we shot, Black Heat. I'm like, they got this part. I, I don't even want to tell people what it is because it's such a big reveal. But, like, I don't want to cry in front of nobody else, so I, like, leave to go cry by myself. Boy, that walk was crazy. <laughs> and, look, I'm doing it thinking I'm killing it. So I did it probably, like, maybe four times. And then and then Wes came to me and was like, you almost there. <laughs> like, I was like, nigga, what? This I ain't got it yet. He's like, no, nah, I think you could go a little bit further like that. I was like, all right, you know, because it's like a range of, of situations. I go from crying to being like, you know what, fuck that, and let all of that turn into rage, you know? So it's like, it's an interesting little few minutes right there. Yeah. I got to go tap in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding the Yo, you that's how you know when nigga put the camera down, you know nigga be tired, nigga do this. <sighs> nigga be looking at you trying to hold their eyes open so they don't cry and shit like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's how you know when you look up and the fucking the people around you crying and shit, that's how you know you you actually killing it. Cuz some people could dial it in and it just don't feel the same. So you seen like people around like crying when you was crying. Oh, facts. When I did the Easy E shit, nigga, Cube Wife, shout out to Aunt T. Kim. You hear me? She got up and walked out that bitch. She said, I don't even see how y'all doing this. She got the fuck. She wasn't even, she said, I'm not staying for this shit, man. Hell no. <laughs> like, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of times, like, it happened a lot of times. And it's because I re- it come from a real place. Like, you know, like when you think about the shy, like, how would it feel really? To lose your little brother and you feel like, damn, like, if I go kill this motherfucker, my mama going to lose two sons. Mm. The amount of, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? Like, you go to questioning all type of stuff. Like, you know, I don't know what everybody walk is, but I would assume that you would question God. Like, how you let this shit happen? You know what I mean? Like, right. everything you thought you knew about life changes in the moment, you know? So I think it's important to be like, vulnerable but also not overthink it like just feel the feelings that are happening in the moment just allow yourself to be there Definitely. shit crazy so if you could look back at your younger self what would you tell yourself nigga turn up nigga the future gonna be great <laughs> turn the fuck up everything that happened bad to us all the times we was crying because we had no christmas presents it's gonna be all right you know what i mean that's that's what i would say like just you know, it's no need to keep your fingers crossed. You know what I mean? Everything you believe about yourself is the truth. Right. Yeah. So anything you want to leave with the people before we get out of here? Um, it starts with you. It really starts with you. You know, it starts with the way you think. It starts with the way you handle yourself. Like, you got to be your best friend. You got to be your biggest cheerleader. You got to be your go-to person. All of that. And I know it could seem like a lot, but... 
if if not you, then who? Who gonna invest in you like you? You know, love love on you. Tell yourself great shit. You know what I mean? Pull a Cat Williams and look in, in the mirror and say, you know, I'm feeling extra tall today. I think I, I'm i having a six foot one kind of day today. Like, do whatever you need to do to tell yourself, like, move forward. You know what I mean? Because you might have somebody on the inside that you need to show to the world. You feel me? You could change the world. Only you. Do you feel like you changed the world? Um... I feel like I'm trying to be the person I wish I had growing up. Mm -hmm. So if I just change one life, it might change the world. So I take it. (laughs) I take it. All right, man. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. This shit was dope. We enjoyed you, man. We enjoyed all the laughs. All the good memories. We we got to live basically through you for a little bit. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so thank yeah. you, man. I appreciate you. Man, this is what we're all thinking podcast stories behind the craft. Special guest, man. Y'all tap in, roll the two point million. Yes, roll man. the five thousand subscribers. Y'all tap in, man. We out. Peace. Hey, what's-